What's up Stitches? My name is Smeichel and welcome to or back to my YouTube channel. And this, as always, is our wonderful co-host, Sir Spicious. Today we are going to do a little bit of a different video. As you can see, we're in a cosier setting, I've got my fairy lights behind me, ignore the colours of those. I know that they're Christmas themed, they're just the only ones I have that are long enough. But this video, we're going to sit down and just like knit and natter, sit and chat while I knit. I used to do similar things to this um, on a live stream for Twitch, but I found that I didn't really get much knitting done because I was so engrossed in chatting with you guys. So I thought, sit this down, you know, have a little chit chat. Uh, feel free, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you questions throughout. Uh, feel free to put them in the comments down below. I want to know how you're doing. And yeah, just to feel like you're knitting with someone. So yeah, let's get into it. Currently I am knitting with some beautiful yarn. It's the yarn that I've shown you previously in my um, podcasts. It's the Irish Artisan Yarn in the colourway Kinsale? Kinsdale? I've got the label right here. Kinsale, I was right the first time. Um, it is a four ply or fingering weight yarn, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, hand dyed. Yeah, I've shown you guys it a million times before and I haven't ever started knitting with it. And uh, as I told you guys a couple of videos ago, I thought I'd injured myself. So I stopped knitting for a while and then over the holiday period I was working quite a lot um, in my retail job and so when I came home I decided instead of doing stuff for Smike Goes Knitting I'll just do like a little personal knit which is this one. So what I'm making right now is the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Mae. Um, enjoying it so far, I'm just doing the top portion before the sleeve separation enjoying it quite a lot so far. This is my first time working with finger weight, fingering weight yarn. I usually just went with DK or Aran. So yeah, it's looking really good. So yeah, that's what I'm knitting. What are you guys currently working on at the moment? As you can see, Suspicious is knitting as well. Uh, he is just knitting a garter stitch scarf out of some really fluffy wool. You will have seen it if you saw my most recent podcast. Um, I showed it off there. So yeah, we're just chilling. We're just chilling. How was everyone's holiday period? It was a bit of a different one this year, wasn't it? Um, especially, I don't know what's going on in other countries with the Rona, but uh, in the UK, not having the best time. A lot of people were in lockdown, including myself, so couldn't go see family, which sucked a bit, but you've got to do what's right, haven't you? So, yeah, Christmas was a different one this year, but it wasn't bad in any way, shape or form. Just wasn't with my family. Stayed at home, played some board games, chatted to some friends over the interwebs. So it wasn't too bad. And when this video goes out, it will be 2021. Right now, it is New Year's Eve. I'm getting ready for the New Year's celebration. So, uh, how was your New Year's? Uh, if you did anything at all? Again, I'm going to be at home, but I think I'm going to video call with some good friends. So that will be nice. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be enjoyable. Just can't wait for all of this to blow over and I can start living my best life. <laughs> but being at home has not been the worst. I've been able to knit a lot more, which has been nice. Obviously, if I knit too much and I don't stretch enough, I my muscles are like, ah, what are you doing? Um, so I need to I need to do that a bit more. But yeah, I mean, had all of this not happened, I don't think Smart Goes Knitting would have been a thing. So I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, what have you guys been up to lately? I tend to like flip between different things. Knitting's the only kind of constant thing that I do all the time. So like I'll flip between reading. So I was reading a Terry Pratchett book, 
uh, it's Mort. I think it's number four in the series. Um, apparently it's a bit easier to read than Colour of Magic. And uh, I am not someone who reads often because I am always knitting. I'm always focusing on knitting. So I, would, I just never get the time to read. I do listen to audiobooks, but I generally just listen to um, Happy by Darren Brown. That's probably something I just listen to on repeat. It's nice. He's got a very lovely voice and calms me when I'm feeling stressed. And I, I do listen to podcasts. I think I mentioned in my last, um, my last podcast, which ones I listen to. But Off Menu has been quite a popular one with me lately. Uh, Feel Better Live More. I've listened to a few of those. Uh, but if you have any recommendations, let me know. I'm always open to listening to some, to some new podcasts. Because I find that I like to cherry pick episodes. Like I don't listen to every episode of every podcast. Because I just don't know. There are some episodes where you like listen to a podcast and you're like, this just isn't. This isn't for me. This isn't for me. So I like to cherry pick, but. Eventually, I find that, especially with Off Menu, the season being finished now, I will go back and listen to new ones so I can hear some fresh material, but I do like to listen to certain ones on repeat, like um, the one with Jordan Banjo, Always Makes Me Die, uh, hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Uh, the one with Nish Kumar and uh, Joel Domit, those two always make me laugh. I think it's because they had such a, a good rapport with them, because they're obviously friends better yeah I like those ones yeah I've also watched, been watching some TV I've uh, I feel like I say I feel like I'm definitely late to this one but um community community is something I've really been enjoying uh, I didn't start watching it until recently and then they start talking about what year they're in <laughs> It's very old, <laughs> but hilarious all the same. It's lovely to see them like progressing along with the times as well, because they've obviously been going for such a long time now. So that's a lot of fun. Okay. Just having to... I'm on the second... Ra if you've got the Cozy Classic light, you'll know that there's two raglan sections. I'm on the second raglan section. Um, so I just need to make sure I'm doing the right increases. And I always, I always get into like a groove of knitting, but then sometimes I wonder because I'm knitting so subconsciously. That's not. That doesn't sound right. Because automatically, because I'm knitting so automatically, I worry that I make mistakes, and I constantly go back and check whether I've done it right but sometimes like with the increases that Jessie uses they're not increases that I'm used to so I don't really know what they're supposed to look like anyway so I just kind of have to guess that I've done it fine the numbers all add up so I've definitely done that right but I just need to make sure it looks okay I try not to make the knitting perfect because there's no such thing as perfect. And if you constantly strive for per perfection, I don't imagine you get anything done. Like with these videos, I'm, I know there's certain things I could make better on the editing side of things, different things I could add. I could make suspicious, more animated or things like that. But if I constantly just try and aim for perfection, then I know personally I won't get things done like I'm someone who I just have to do it and I just have to do it and because if I sit down and kind of dither about it then it's not going to get done because then I'll get myself in a whole in a whole mood of panic and anxiety and then I get a bit self-destructive and it's not great so I just gotta be good enough as my dissertation supervisor used to say just focus on being good enough. You know, don't try and be the best. Just be good enough. 
And once you're capable and, you know, perfection doesn't stress you out and make you anxious like it does me, um, then you can continue striving for better. But to, for starters, just focus on being good enough. <laughs> Which I like, and I like a lot. By the way, my camera will cut out every so often, um, as it likes to do. Um, so that's just something I'm gonna have to deal with. I'm trying to keep this as unedited as possible. So I know uh, a good friend of mine commented that they, they like seeing this raw, unedited footage. So I have certain Michaelisms, as she called it, that I leave out sometimes, which probably means I ramble a lot and I cut all that out. But it's just a stream of consciousness sometimes when I film. Like right now, I also get to a point where I start commenting on the things I've said. So I'll say something and afterwards be like. No, that's ridiculous. Like, I, I, I should. I, why did I say that? That's stupid. Um, or I'll make a joke, and I'm like, that was so unfunny to everyone but me, because <laughs> I'm terrible for making jokes that I know I'll find hilarious, and like one other person that I know will find hilarious. But I'm just sat there like laughing so much, thinking it's the funniest thing that's ever existed. How do you guys? Um, keep track of your knits. I like doing tally charts. I'm sure there's like apps out there or something like stitch counter apps, which probably make it easier for you. But I just find this makes it easier for me. And I can, like if I get stressed about something or if I do something wrong on one side and I don't want to go and undo it, I write it down so then I can do it wrong on the other side as well. So then at least it's symmetrical. Because, as I said, <laughs> I just, I try not to be perfect, so if I make a mistake like a few rows back and I don't want to rip it all back and go back and try again, I'll just be like, okay, so I did this on this side, I'll just make sure I do that on the other side too. I'm also alternating skeins. Skeins? Skeins? I don't know how to say it and I've, I've not heard a Brit say it. Because they just say balls of wool or yarn or they don't Brits don't really say yarn. That's another thing. When I say yarn I feel weird saying it. Um But have any ever heard like Americans or Canadians say the word skein or skein? And they say skein, but it just doesn't sound right to me. But then reindeer. Spelt kind of similar. Skein, rain. Who knows? I'm gonna probably switch between the two because that's what I tend to do when I don't know something. Oh, then I'll be saying it right 50% of the time. Yeah. So, 2021, for now, it's for you, it's 2021. And that's weird because I know a lot of people are sitting around thinking, don't know if you guys heard that, that was adorable. Um, sitting around thinking, what have I done with my year? I've done nothing with my year. 2020 has sucked. Let's hope for a better 2021. Um, which is valid, you know. 2020 has been a difficult year. But I also, I like to look for the positives in things. Um, because it can't all be negative. Nothing can inherently be negative or positive. Um, it's what I try to believe anyway. And I say try because theoretically I believe it and then in a moment I'm like, oh, this is the worst thing to ever happen. And then in reality, it really wasn't, you know? <laughs> but so like negatives of my year, I lost loved ones. I haven't been able to see other loved ones. I've been stuck indoors a lot, which never does. Uh, anything great for me. I, I like going outdoors quite a bit and I had to give up climbing and other different things I haven't been able to do so that's kind of been sucky. 
But on the positive side of things, I've spent a lot more time with my partner. Uh, we have a lot more inside jokes now, so that's always fun. Um, I started Smichael Goes Knitting. This was all birthed out of grief, I think, and being stuck and bored at home. Had, you know, negative things not happened this year, I don't think I would have taken the time to sit back, step back and say, right, I, what, what do I want to do that makes me happy? What makes me happy? What could I do with what makes me happy? And so I don't think this would have happened. So that's a positive from this year, definitely. Um, Suspicious wouldn't be here, would you? I'm talking to, uh, to a crewmate. Um, yeah, so it's not all been negative, and I think this is one year of the 20 something years I've been alive. If it takes three years to settle down and go back to some kind of normal, lost, oh, I just lost a stitch marker. This is fun. Um, how terrifying is that? Losing a stitch marker. This is quite a small dainty one as well, so if that was gone, it's, it's gone. <laughs> Don't even remember what I was talking about. But positives coming from there. Yeah, so this situation has not been ideal, but you know, it's been positive. So let me know in the comments. What positives you found from this year? I know a lot of people who never knit before and started to knit. My Patreon supporter, Gillian. Thank you for the support on Patreon. If you guys want to shout out in the video and other wicked benefits, then uh, head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Michael Goes Knitting. Um, told me that she started knitting very recently actually and she started knitting little crewmates which is exciting um i am considering doing little hats for crewmates um and maybe knitting a giant one for suspicious over here because that's small little projects that I can get done pretty quickly and I can get many of those. I think my issue is I don't seem to knit as fast or get as much done as other knitters. So I watch some podcasts that are like bi-weekly or weekly podcasts or whatever on here of people knitting and they've got like five finished objects or something. I'm like, how do you get that done so quickly? Like, I hadn't done a podcast in ages because I was doing the suspicious over here. And then I felt like, obviously I had a lot to talk about, but realistically, half of those things like were already half done and, you know, I'm not the fastest of knitters. And if I were to do a January podcast soon, I don't know what I would have to talk about because I haven't really made anything that I haven't already shown you guys. Like I could talk about stuff that I just didn't talk about in the last podcast, like there are a couple of things that I haven't been able to show you guys because I was going to do a tutorial for them and then my shoulder all kicked off. But yeah, I just don't think I'd have too much to talk about in a podcast, which is why I wanted to do this knit and natter, sit down, chat, because I can just sit down, chat with you guys and just, you know, provide you guys someone to knit with because the podcasts are longer form and they're great but I just don't know if I have enough knitting specific things to talk about whereas I've got so much to talk about in my normal life because I just talk all the time. There was one time when I was younger, I remember I <laughs> I was speaking at my dad so much, like so quickly, 
that I had to sit on the floor for a bit. We were walking somewhere and we were late and I was just talking and talking and talking and I got so lightheaded from like speed walking and talking so much at the same time that I almost fainted. So we had to sit down, made us even more late. Uh, so that's uh, that's me. And I'd always come home from school. My dad would dread asking the question, how was your day? Because he knew I wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> Which is quite funny because my younger sister, who is very similar to me, is very opposite in that respect. Um, you have to really pry information out of her. Whereas I <laughs> would give information to anyone. <laughs> Just, how was your day? Well, I'll tell you everything that happened. Even the boring stuff. This is just so pretty. Like, so pretty. I've never knit with hand-dyed yarn before. I've never alternated skeins. I've never knit with anything that wasn't really acrylic either. So this is my first, like, I was going to say selfish knit, but uh, Maker Bee on Instagram, and she has a Maker Bee podcast on YouTube, um, did a really informative? I don't imagine inf informative is the right word, but it was, um, she made a TikTok basically um, saying, it's not selfish to knit something for yourself in your own time, like your own free time. If you're taking your time to do something, it's not selfish to do something for yourself. Because generally, if other people have other hobbies, they are for this, like the things they're doing is generally for themselves. I am very proud of how this is looking. I'm gonna take such good care of it. I'm gonna look after it, hand wash it, I'm not going to stick it in the washing machine. going to be wonderful. But what are you guys working on at the moment? As I mentioned in my last video, I have now got five whips. So I've got the scarf, the cozy classic light, I've got the folklore cardigan that I'm working on and filming on at the moment. Uh, videos for that won't be out immediately because I kind of want to put the videos out once it's done so you can got, you guys can kind of see each bit properly. Uh, the folklore cardigan will be something that's Patreon exclusive. So if you guys want to see how it, like you want a full access to instructions how to make it, that'll be on Patreon exclusively. It won't be on my shop available anywhere. Um, I will be doing a video um, on how to do all, this, all the different techniques, but I won't sit down and talk about the actual cable work pattern simply because it's too much, man. It's too much, man. Mm -mm. Now we are on an increase row again. I don't know if I'm alternating these skeins right. Or is there a right and wrong way to do it? There is just like a, a line down the back, which I imagine will come out with blocking. Because I've made sure I haven't pulled it all too tight. So I imagine it will look better once I've blocked it. But just where I've alternated the skeins. God, it looks so pretty. Real big fan. Hopefully, I'll be doing more hand-dyed knits over 2021. Because just, like, look at these cakes. Oh, okay, that's a badly wound one. But look at that. That is just glorious. I want to eat it. It's so pretty. So pretty. And I'm not usually like a pink or like light blue person. Like purple, yeah, I could I could do purple. I'm usually like a darker colours person. But when I saw this in my local yarn store, I just I needed it. 
they're just and these cakes are hand wound i will be putting out a video at some point soon on how to hand wind yarn cakes without a winder thing they're not perfect but they do the job i need to get some more yarn to do it with though because i these this was my only like skeins of yarn everything else is already in a ball which you can just uh just use like pull from the center and just get going so need to get more yarn but as i said i want to make sure that i'm buying yarn intentionally with a project in mind so i could look through all of the patterns that i have that i haven't knit yet and just see what ones i could buy the yarn for and then I can show you guys how I wound yarn cakes. But yeah. I am kind of tempted to get a yarn winder. But at the same time, I can do it by hand and it's not something I'm spending all of my time doing. So I don't need one right now. I don't know how often I would use it. So it just makes sense for me to not have one yet. If it comes to a point where... I am using it more than I will. Maybe when I'm designing, maybe. I've got a few designs. So 2021 is going to be an interesting year. I'm putting designs out for the first time, which is nerve wracking because obviously you, you spend a lot of time working on a knitwear design and you want people to like it and you want people to buy it, um, frankly. And so I've got God is in this dress and the chunky scarf in testing at the moment. I've got a top that I'm designing at the moment. Um, and I've got some ideas for like sets and like cohorts and stuff. So it's just a case of sitting my butt down at the computer and typing all of this up. And the top that I'm working on is... Uh, the basic patterns written up so now I'm just like gonna knit it see how it looks see what needs changing on the pattern and then properly write it out tech edit test so that's something to look forward to if you are one of my patrons 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 you will get loads of little sneak peeks coming up and you'll you'll see what it's gonna look like before the rest of the world so that's exciting um, yeah, I think I've got some winter stuff planned for next year already, so if I get designing on that then when it comes around to winter I can get it tested and out for next winter. It's a bit late to do it for this winter because it's already winter and they're kind of sequels, if that makes, that doesn't make any sense to anyone except me. They're related to some other designs I have, so. If they come out first, it won't make any sense, you know? It's crazy to think that I'm designing stuff though. I never saw myself as a creative before, before I started knitting properly. Like I always knew like I liked to draw and stuff, but I didn't think I was ever any good at anything creative. I thought my talents lied solely with academia. I don't know what's going on downstairs. Um, I thought my talents lied solely with academia, but alas, anyone can be creative when you put your mind to it. And if you, you know, stop being so judgmental towards yourself, that was something I had because I thought, you know, I've got a degree, uh, potentially considering going back and doing a master's and PhD at some point in my life. I thought you had to be either or, you could either be academic or creative, but obviously now I'm realising, one, that's not always the case, and two, it's not the case for me either, so, yeah. Growing up is learning more about yourself each and every day. Hmm. Did I pass that 
that, did I increase that one? See, I always do this. No, I didn't. Oh, that's annoying. That's really annoying. Unless, oh no, I didn't need to. Ha ha, I'm fine. This is fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> I'm so excited to get to the sleeve separation bit. I've never done a top down raglan before or like a top down sweater or like anything. This is my first one. So I've never separated for sleeves before. I've never done all of that. So I'm very excited to see how it all goes for me. Maybe I should have done a practice run with some yarn that I didn't care as much about. <laughs> because I care very much about this yarn. It was quite expensive for me. And uh, I want this to be a piece that I wear quite frequently. And I imagine it will be, like it's a nice, I can wear it in the summer because I'm going for the cropped sleeveless version. Version. Um, so I can wear it as a crop top in the summer and then when it's colder I can wear it on top of like a long sleeve turtleneck, although I don't, I don't own any of those but it's fine, it's fine. I'll knit myself some. <laughs> so I've just went knitting on knitting on knitting. I'm excited to knit more for me. In the past I've been very, very quick to give my knitting away or knit something for someone. It took up a lot of time and it was very stressful. Um, which is one of the reasons why I don't really do commissions anymore because I find them incredibly stressful. Because I'm not just knitting for myself, like with my knitted items if I've got an end that is not properly woven in it's fine but if it's for someone else and especially if they're paying for it I feel that pressure to do it properly and if it doesn't look as I think it should then it stresses me out like big time but like things like hats and maybe socks I'm probably more comfortable doing but like big things like cardigans and sweaters and tops and other things like that I, I think it, it would stress me out too much to do on a commission for myself it'd be fine as I've said like I'm not precious about weaving in ends so for me if I've got like an end dangling about it's fine don't really mind where is my next increase it's there I'm quite liking this in this increase method, lifted increase. Never really used it before. I think once before, years ago, when I knit my first ever sock, I think that had a lifted increase, which looked cool because it was a toe up sock. But I wasn't really a fan of how like the heel turn and all of that stuff looked on a toe up. I think it looks better cuff down. But I'm not the biggest sock knitter there is out there. I don't own any sock patterns. I just use, like, if I'm going to knit socks, I use the cottage socks pattern. Mm -hmm. This is the increase. There we go. I'm very excited for this. I just, so many times I just stop and look at it. It just makes me so happy. I am worried it's going to be too big for me though. I knit it, I'm knitting it in the size above because I was scared it was going to be too tight and I didn't want it to be too tight because then if it's too tight I'm not going to wear it and I'd probably be more likely to wear something that was slightly oversized than something that was too small. But I'm scared it's going to be too big, you know. Always a worry of mine. Mm -hmm. 
in my 10 lessons video I said how I can um, knit without looking. Didn't realise that's exclusively to bigger needles than these. These are... Three point seven five millimeter needles. I think my ability to knit without looking is exclusive to like five and a half millimeters and up. <laughs> like this is just too small for me. I think I'm just used to chunkier yarn and chunkier needles. But I think I think after this round, I'll draw this video to a close. It's been going on for quite a while now and it's been nice to sit down and just chat with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this kind of long form video. I hope you felt less lonely maybe while you were knitting, if that was something that you felt before. Let me know in the comments down below if you have enjoyed this and you want to see more videos like this. It's nice to do and I... I need video, I've got some video ideas coming up, like technique videos for the folklore cardigan and how to hand wind balls of yarn etc etc but um, I wonder if this is something I could do more of, if you guys like it then let me know and I'd be happy to do more of these, it's nice to just sit down and do something that doesn't have loads of different shots that I have to get and you know with like tutorials they take like a week to do whereas this will take like a day which is nice and it feels a bit more raw and connected to you guys which I quite like and you get to see this kind of side of me where of course I'm, I'm always me but when it's the videos that are a bit more produced, I cut out the, the silences and the stupid jokes that I make and the mispronunciations that I say. So this is a bit more of what I actually am and not what I'm I, uh, like trying to be, ideally, on YouTube. Just needs to be a bit more chill, really. I wonder if I should do like knitting ASMR one time. Because my needles are quite clinky. I never really understood ASMR. I imagine, I, I think I read somewhere that it gives like, it has benefits to people and like makes them feel more calm or something. Which I imagine is nice, but. No. The thing that gets me about ASMR is when people whisper. Because when you whisper, naturally, you make more mouth noises. Like saliva noises or like lip smacking or, I don't know, just different mouth noises. And there is nothing that puts me off more than hearing people's mouth noises. Like the amount of times I've had to refilm or like re record my voiceovers just because at the start, like, you can hear my mouth opening and that puts me off. It puts me right off. Which isn't ideal, but it's fine. It's just what I have to deal with in my life. How are you doing, Suspicious? How's your knitting going? Also want to let you guys know I recognise that Suspicious doesn't have any arms and he's not actually knitting. But uh, for comedic purposes, <laughs> I found it hilarious putting this knitting on his lap. Uh, don't know about you guys, but um, tickled me pink. It's nice to be sat on the same like distance away from the camera as well as suspicious. He's normally like behind me, so you guys can't really see him. But now you guys get to see his little visor <laughs> a bit more a bit more in detail and a bit more close up I also hum a lot a lot 
And that's not something I show on my videos. But it's nice to feel no pressure to say things in a certain way. It's nice. Did I do an increase? See, this is what happens when you talk too much. Yes, I did. Okay, that's fine. Tis fine. Well, there we are. We finished the round. And I think that'll be it for us today. Thank you so much. If you made it all the way to this video, then comment down below what your favorite hot drink is. Let me know if you if you made it this far. I appreciate all of the support that any of you give me and I really, really appreciate you sticking through this video with me um, and so does Suspicious. Obviously, if you've not already, subscribe, like this video if you like this kind of format. Uh, big thank you again to Gillian, my patron supporter. You're amazing, you're lovely, and I appreciate everything that you do for me. Pardon moi. If you would like to support me on Patreon and get loads of cool benefits like discounts on my patterns when they're released and early release shout out secret videos that no one else gets to see then head on over to my patreon patreon.com forward slash michael goes knitting see what tickles your fancy over there um and i have my instagram i don't use it as much but who knows once this is finished maybe i will <laughs> who knows but that's my uh it's michael goes knitting yeah that's michael goes knitting on instagram if you fancy giving me a cheeky little follow um yeah I hope you guys have had a lovely new year. I hope you all stay safe, you stay healthy, you stay in a mental space that leaves you comfortable and cosy and I will see you soon. Stay wholesome and happy knitting. <laughs>